finally coming to some simcha, to some kind of joy. After all, it is the month of other. We have to have joy. And that's what this chapter, 31, in one word, is simcha. What have we spoken about is that a person, when they will meditate, think about um, the evil impulse that they have, the animal's soul within them, that they want to humble and not allow it to control, to let it to control me. So you're going to have a serious conversation, a raging one perhaps, one that is humbling in your spirit that you feel lesser than all people. That could be a downer. The alternative says that's okay. That's a downer. But it's only very temporary moment of being a downer, which is an expression of klipa, klipas noiga, the good in klipas noiga, in the shell that covers over the divine. Because anything that is of, of divine nature, any mitzvah that you engage in, like right now we're learning, it has to be oiz v'chedva. It has to be with strength and with gladness of heart, with joy. You're doing a mitzvah? There's no room for anything else but that. It's right now. Put aside any anxiety, put aside any things that are, are a downer. Because we're doing a mitzvah, it's got to be done with joy. Now, not every moment we're doing a mitzvah. There might be a moment that we're in kind of um, down because of some things that are happening in our lives. So as the altar again said, that that's okay. But that downer temporarily is brings us to a more important state of being. And that is looking at ourselves with bitterness. Looking at our situation, our spiritual situation, with bitterness. Ah, bitterness is not PC. Well, the truth is the truth. There might be bitter things that I need to deal with in my life. In my life, not bitterness towards anybody else, that's sinful. But bitterness towards me is a vehicle for change. Whereas sadness brings you down. Bitterness is great vitality and is the tool to be able to make, affect change. And it's a holy thing then. It's a holy thing. This is what the Altar Rebbe says. It will lead us to having a contrite heart to break that negative tendencies that we have from within. And with, with that, the Alter Rebbe says, we'll be able to arrive at true joy. And we'll have a double measure of comfort. Why? Because you eliminate the negativity, the, the, the downer, because you've dealt with what you need to deal with. You've dealt with a, a shortcoming, an issue, something that you, oh, you what I do that, and you had that bitterness and change. This change comes from within. As you, everybody knows the story. It's been told before. A guy comes to the local um, Depenur, local 7 Eleven. He buys a few goodies, he gives a $20 bill, and you know, it only came up to seven eighty-five. He puts out his hand and he says, change, please. And the girl looks at him, or the guy, whoever, and says, sorry, sir, change comes from within. Yes, we can't change others, but we can change ourselves. What's the vehicle? Well, first we're going to be down about the situation, if we've meditated and thought about our situation, but that should be a very short, temporary space that will lead us to a greater place of gvura, strength, of um, bitterness that will you will bring upon the, the source of that negative, uh, from the source of the negativity that comes from gvura, you bring it from a holy sp place, and that bitterness is then capacity for us to change, to shift, 
and then rid ourselves of that negativity from within. We've owned what we need to own. So now we remove it all. We have great assurance that God is going to be accepting that and that we have uh, been cleansed. And then uh, that brings us to a joy. Dealing with what you got to deal with, dealt with it, that itself brings joy. Now, to the next level of joy. That's the first level. After coming from the dark place from within and dealing with that darkness from within, dealing with my challenges, with my failings, that itself brings joy. Now, a person should say to their heart, you know, indeed, without a doubt, uh, I am removed from God. I have a place within me. I have something within me that is a, an evil inclination, an animal soul that is despicable. Its nature is despicable, right? Yes, God put that in there, in me. Absolutely, right? And it is true. It is a true part of me. Remember, there's a bean in The righteous person has transformed it. So even though you've owned it, you didn't transform it. So it's still there. Its nature is there, right? The evil impulse that we have in our heart was not transformed, so it's still there. So you're recognizing it, right? However, that's my body. That's my animating soul, my animal soul, right? Yet, yet, and this is the important thing, there's within me something else. That's, what is that? Something that we haven't dealt with in the last few chapters because we were dealing only with one part of me, the animal soul that we wanted to humble, right? Because you need to do that, uh, not to allow it to control us. So now you say to yourself, yeah, but you know what? There is another part in me. And that is literally mamish, a part of God, my godly soul. So we're shifting now how we're looking at ourselves. We dealt with the negative side. We recognize it's still there, even though the feelings I dealt with, the nature of that place where the feelings come from, the animal soul and the body, still there. Can't fool ourselves and think we've transformed it and we're righteous, we're not. However, I'm going to now shift identity or shift focus on my identity to that part which is it literally a part of God. Now, that part of God, the divine soul, right now is in exile, right? It's an exile, and the more I'm distant from God, the more it is in exile, and actually the more it's in exile, the more I should have pity on it. I should have compassion over it. So what will that compassion lead me to? That now I have to put my entire focus, my entire aim and desire is to extricate it from its exile, from its imprisonment, and return it to, as the soul is feminine, the shama, the, the usual term that we use for it, right? To return the, the soul to her father's home. Father being our father, God, right? So before my soul came into the body, it was, she was with her father, absorbed in its root source, in the heaven above. And now that it came into the body, the body puts it into an exile, right? Remember, the righteous is not that way, but you and I, even the Bainani, it's still in exile. So having that awareness, I'm going to put the focus on the godly soul that I have. I'm going to concentrate now completely and put my, all of my aspirations to do Torah and mitzvahs, especially prayer. Why? To 
to release my divine soul from its captivity and bind my soul to God. How am I doing that? Through tshuva, my simtavim, through penitence and good deeds. And as one hour of tshuva, my simtavim, of penitence and good deeds in this world is worth all of the world to come. Because here I can extricate my soul, bring it back to its attachment and closeness to God. Um, and therefore, that's the, 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 the intention that I have. My intention is shift. Shift the focus. Till now the focus was, I have an animal soul that needs humbling. I need to rein it in. I need to um, own what I need to own, right? In, in the failings that I might have from that, the animal soul and the body with its agenda. Dealt with it, that itself is joy. From darkness to light, right? But then now is another level of joy. Is I'm turning my focus to not my animal soul anymore. I'm not looking at that. I'm not concentrating on that. I'm concentrating on my godly soul. And when I think about it, oh my gosh, I've got a part of God in me. And it's distant. Distant why? Not inherently distant. It's distant only because the way it is in a body, the way God creates this situation, no fault of ours, but this is the reality, that it's an exile. Because it's in, meshed together, vested in the body, it's in exile. And therefore there's a distance just because of that. So I got to extricate it from its imprisonment, from its exile. So I focus on my godly soul and bringing it back to, bringing her back to being absorbed in the divine, in God, as it was before it came into this world, it was a part of God, right? And only knew that attachment. How am I gonna do it? Hey, but what's so great about it? If it was that way already, so, you know, what, what am I accomplishing? Well, one hour of doing good deeds, mitzvahs in this world and returning our, our soul with the intent of returning our soul and connecting to God is worth everything that we were before we came into this world, which we'll elaborate more upon. But simply, that's our effort, that's our engagement, that's our mission. So with the new focus, of course, that brings a new level of joy, which we'll speak about more tomorrow. I know now that. What do you know? What did you learn? And who's ready to come on and share? Uh, Michael says, it sounds like it's better not to feel feed the animal soul within ourselves. Absolutely correct. We should. Simone asks, how do I change? I was crying about that this morning. Well, that's what we uh, just, uh, the idea that we just brought out, right? Of um, dealing with what we need to deal with. And the last several chapters, Simone, uh, if you want to take a look at the, look back, you can see you can, by the way, folks, just a reminder, in you, on YouTube, Tanya Rabbi, um, please subscribe. And there you get all of the teachings, everything. So, great place to go. Um, so, Jeannie, I know now the shifting focus from my animal soul to the knees of my godly soul brings real joy. Very good. Anna, I hope that 
I, I know now that after I humble my animal soul, I feel joy because of the success. Afterwards, I have to focus on the divine soul in me as an exile because it is, it is away from the source. Excellent. Susan, I know now that, to, that a focused shift is a spiritual good thing. Very good. Anybody else? Um, anybody new to come and share? Michael? Uh, Katie, not yet, probably. Lisa, Andrea, Stan, Sandy, Saramalka. Susan, Pamela, um, TJ, Simcha, Marina. Eugenia. All right. Andrew, free the divine soul through Torah and mitzvahs. Absolutely. David, I know now that I need to focus on my godly soul when I struggle with challenges. And though my and through my bitterness, I can push away these challenges and move to being joyful. Excellent. Michael, I know now that by owning our animal soul, we can move forward to Simcha and grow my godly soul. Very good. Excellent. Sandy, maybe one day. Okay. Okay. I need somebody new. Please. <laughs> Hi, Rabbi. Hey. Uh, in class. So you um there. just to say that you know we all have our struggles and and the the tanya really helps put things in perspective uh, if you're continually watching this and 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 do the exercises uh i'm struggling with things like everyone else um but I, what i'm understanding is that by the bitterness is not to bring you down to be depressed but more to give you a, a little push to uh, bring you to joy, to to like give you the strength to do the right thing and and overcome our I'll call our nature. We have a nature to uh, you know we have our natural way of reacting. I'll call it reacting. So we got to be proactive rather than being reactive. Right. right. Yeah. Thank you. So that's all right. <laughs> oh, okay. A wonderful day. <laughs> Thank you. Let me see if I can get my oh, leave broadcast. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, remember bitterness is not about, um, um, it's not a negative thing, it's a very healthy, good thing because it's full of life that gives us change. Right. And then today, what we explained was the refocus after all of that. Um, to refocus and to now look at another part of me that needs to be um, needs to be appreciated the divine and first to have that pity right first to have that pity uh, on it because it's an exile and then because of the pity you will have on it that will lead you to focus, put your efforts, your concentration on returning it to its source, to God, to the divine, through doing a simple mitzvah, like right now what we're doing. So when we have that, what we need to think about from today's class is to have intent, to have intent to do that when we're learning Tanya. I'm extricating my divine soul from its imprisonment, its exile, 
and bringing it and attaching it to God. Amazing. It's amazing as always. Hi. All right, folks. A reminder today. Um, some of you I don't see coming to our yeshiva. Myyeshiva.ca on Zoom. It's also on uh, Facebook. Chabad uh, ZK. But uh, do come and join us. Learn, learn, learn. Remove your get your our soul, our divine soul, out of its imprisonment. All right, folks, I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim, which I'll get It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Have a wonderful day.